Today, we're diving into a lesser known chapter of Commodore history, the Digimuse sound expansion for the Commodore TED series of computers or the Commodore C16 or Commodore Plus 4. Get ready for a short story of teenage tinkerers, forgotten prototypes, and the power of the community to bring this forgotten TED series tech back into action. Before I begin, I want to thank my supporter of the channel, Chris, for his love of the Commodore Plus 4 first, but also for sending me and making me aware of the Digimuse. Our journey begins in Poland during the early 1990s, as here we meet young Sylvester Kuna, better known online as BKP. I reached out to Sylvester and he was kind enough to share much of his history about the Digimuse for this video. As a Commodore enthusiast, BKP stumbled upon something special, a one of only 12 expansion board prototypes created by Tadeusz Zawadowski and called, you guessed it, the Digimuse. And this expansion board packed serious audio punch, pushing the sound capabilities of the Plus 4 to something much more akin to the Commodore 64's SID chip. But the fun part was BKP wasn't just a collector, he was a programmer. Inspired by the Digimuse's potential, he created programs that took advantage of the Digimuse, with the most famous being something called Castle Dance. BKP even began work on a music tracker for the Digimuse, but abandoned the project and actually the Digimuse when he purchased his first Amiga. But before he abandoned the Digimuse, he was able to create a few demos, and you can find all of his work on his Plus Four World profile page, which I'll link all of that along with all the other links you need down in the video description below. But let's fast forward 30 years. And while breaking out his old Commodore Plus Four cassette tapes, he found he was able to recover most of his old Digimuse programs and then decided to resurrect the Digimuse with new modern components and technology. But BKP did remove a feature from the original. According to BKP, The original cartridge contained an EEPROM with an extended basic interpreter for functions controlling the card. But I never really used them, and they had very limited capabilities. So my version is devoid of this memory. But the removal of this feature didn't dissuade others from developing for the Digimuse. Legion of Doom wanted a piece of the action and gave us Tetris 2K21 and New Pogati. And then Ulysses 777 gave us a platformer game called Dizzy 3.5. And, and we'll take a more detailed look at those titles in a little bit. Now, BKP continued to share and explain that because Digimuse hardware was limited, emulation was the best option to make enhanced Plus 4 available to everyone. When the forum administrators learned my story, they expanded the Yeep emulator to synthesize sounds from the card. I was a beta tester and wrote some programs using Digimuse. Now, I just became familiar with Yape within the last year or so, thanks to Chris, and we'll be taking a look and using Yape to look at some of the demos because my Commodore Plus 4 is an NTSC machine and many of the demos are only PAL. Now, the purists out there are going to say, hey, Retrocombs, you're not capturing from real hardware, you're capturing from an emulator. Hey, I'm sorry, I don't have a PAL machine. All right, let's take a deeper look at the Digimuse and see what makes this thing tick. I mentioned earlier the Digimuse uses a Yamaha audio chip and it's the Yamaha 2149AY chip, which is a clone of the original General Instruments AY38910. This original chip was using game machines like Intellivision. Oh, who remembers the Intellivision? Wow, that's a blast from the past. And computers like the ZX Spectrum. The AY chip was licensed in the 80s and used in several MSX1 and MSX2 Japanese computers. So based on all that, it has some retro sound cred. So what can it do? Well, it's a three channel sound chip and can play three different sounds simultaneously. The AY chip is known for its warm analog sound, which is perfect for games and music. Sound from the Yamaha chip is piped not through the TED, but directly from the Digimuse through an onboard three and a half millimeter audio jack. The ship also has a built-in envelope generator that allows you to control the attack, decay, sustain, and release of your sounds. And how does this differ from the stock TED chip in the Commodore Plus 4 and C16? Well, in comparison, the Commodore's Plus 4 TED chip has a simple tone generator that produces two channels of audio. The first channel produces a square wave, and the second can produce either a square wave or white noise. Between the two channels, you could hear either two tones or one tone plus noise. 
To further compare, the Commodore 64's famous SID chip has three channels and can generate three independent voices simultaneously, each with its own waveform, frequency, and volume. Each voice can generate four different waveforms, a pulse wave with variable duty cycle, a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, and pseudo-random noise called white noise. Now, some of you may be wondering, what about the VIC-20's VIC chip? How does it compare to the TED and the SID and the Digimuse? Well, here's a table that puts all four of those together for you. Using the Digimuse is pretty self-explanatory. It's a cartridge, so what do you do? That's right, you plug it into the cartridge port of the Plus 4 or C16. I wish I could take the cartridge and sand it down a little bit on the sides. I also wish that it were small enough that I could put it in a 3D printed case so it's an actual cartridge. But I can't do that because the PCB is really tight, as I mentioned, but also there are components all the way to the edge of the PCB. It was mentioned earlier that BKP took out the basic calls from ROM to the Digimuse. However, you can program the device directly using machine language, or you can use poke commands in BASIC. Now, I am not a machine language programmer. I do know BASIC, and we had a memory table. And thanks to Chris, we now have a program written in BASIC that we can use to pipe out sounds from the Commodore Plus 4 to the Digimuse. Let's see if this works. Okay, let's type in the program that Chris provided for us. By the way, this program will be on the companion blog post for this video, and you can find that link in the video description below. You know, here's a little plus four tip for you, or TED series tip. If you don't want to type in line numbers, let's just go ahead and put auto 10, and let's uh, go ahead and do line 50 and poke. Now watch what happens when I hit return. You'll see it automatically goes to 60. That is a nice feature. This is one of the small little things about the Commodore Plus 4 that make it such a great machine, especially for basic. It has one of the best basics ever. Let's run it and see if we get any sound. And we do. Okay, let's run stop. That's pretty impressive. And that's definitely an upgrade from the standard sounds that we can get out of the TED chip. But that just scratches the surface. Let's take a look at some games and demos that utilize the Digimuse. So I went to Plus Four World and I grabbed everything that was tagged with Digimuse. And that includes the cross scroll demo. Demo three. Demo two. Guessed it, demo one.
that original music tracker. Stop the Express. New Pagodi. Tetris 2K21. <laughs> Dizzy three and a half. So that's a pretty good selection of titles for the Digimuse. Unfortunately, there's not a lot for the device currently. However, if I've forgotten something and you know a title or demo that I've forgotten, please put that in the comments below, or you can also send it to me at retrocombs at iCloud.com. So can you get one of these? Well, unfortunately, as of this video, BKP only has one Digimuse available for $50 now. If you'd like to purchase that last Digimuse, please send me an email, again, retrocombs at iCloud.com, and I'll connect you to BKP. I do not want to just throw out his email address. Kind of surprising though, it looks like there continues to be interest in the Digimuse. And there's two new hardware projects that pack the Digimuse punch to it. The first is a complete variation of the Digimuse called the Digimuse. That's three O's, folks. This is another attempt to recreate the Digimuse using modern components, and I look forward to tracking their progress at Plus Four World. And if you're interested in integrating the Digimuse solution onto your motherboard, the little 16 board creators plan to integrate Digimuse functionality audio features into their Plus Four motherboard replacement. Now I have to put it out there, if the creators of either of these devices would like me to take a look at it, just reach out and send me one. I'll be happy to take a look at it and share it with everybody else like I did this Digimuse. I hope you enjoyed this unexplored road across the Commodore Plus Four history. I have lots of other great Commodore Plus Four content, including my Commodore Plus Four user's guide series. Learn everything you wanted to know about your Commodore Plus 4 by going along with me chapter by chapter through the Commodore Plus 4 user's guide. It is a blast and you can check a link out for that right after this video. Retro Cones, I'll see you next time.